look, John, in circumstances like this, you have to mean what you say. And I think I was right to try and make sure that the police and the criminal justice system were adhering to guidelines. And, you know, just to remind your viewers, there were multiple allegations of sexual crimes made against Leon Britton. And in those circumstances, I don't think it was unreasonable to ask that the guidelines were adhered to. And I think most reasonable people would think that where there are multiple allegations from people independent of each other, never met, that the first thing the police would want to do was to find out what the alleged suspect had to say. Well, we'll come to those uh, allegations in a moment and, and the sort of people who made them. But the critical thing, surely, is that you have a day after the man dies of an agonising death from cancer, uh, you sign up to the idea uh, that he was a, a man uh, as close to evil as any human being could be. That requires a fundamental apology. Look, I've with, I, I, what that statement came from an alleged survivor. Yeah, but you And I repeated it. it, and I regretted using that emotive language, and I've said that. But I... Would you imagine the grief that must have caused his family? I'm so, I did say at the time, I'm sorry for the distress it would cause. Well, what cause. about telling them that you're sorry? You haven't even been in touch with well, them. Well, because I feel that the survivors of sexual crimes, particularly child abuse, which this one is not released, the James case is not related to, need to have their voice heard. Now, you may and I talked to, well, let, me, of let me just say, and I talked, to, I talked to two of the survivors who were extremely distressed, who told me that they felt that justice would now not be done they would not be able to have a proper investigation, and they were very emotional about it. So I, if, I regret repeating their emotive words, and I've said that. Well, you, you have said that you believe the right way to deal with these things is for the authorities, the police, to investigate them, and indeed it's your job as an MP to raise issues like this and to have the police investigate them, and you did so a second time after the police had already carried out uh, an investigation. But you don't believe the police. What sets you up as being in some way a better investigator than the police? Well, what happened in that particular case was it was reported in the newspapers that the case against Jane had been dropped. And she asked for an explanation of the police as to whether that was the case. And she had a very difficult meeting with a particular police officer on the case who promised her that within two weeks they would give her the reasons they dropped the case in writing. When the letter didn't arrive, they came to me and, and gave me an explanation. Uh, this is her and her husband. Uh, and then I m wrote to the DPP to ask, to, to demand that the, all guidelines had been adhered to. The DPP wrote back to me, I'm publishing these letters, to say that as far as she was concerned, the guidelines had been adhered to and that it was a live investigation. That, that, those were private letters and the matter closed there. Well, they were investigated again. There, was, there were two investigations, one triggered by you. Well, it, when I received the letter from the DPP, she wrote in her letter that it was a live investigation. So my interpretation was that this was an ongoing inquiry and that there, were, there was more evidence that was being examined. Now, I don't know the whole circumstances of the police investigation, and nor should I know. But what I had was... Uh, a survivor who felt that she had not had her voice heard in the criminal justice system and I helped amplify that to the DPP. But it's not unreasonable for me to demand that the criminal justice system does its job and you know I've got some experience of uh, trying to make sure that it does do that well, job. Well, but that's not all you did, you also queried whether they'd actually, even when they'd done their job, done their job. Uh, you in fact basically challenged what they'd done. There was a disagreement over uh, between the alleged victim and the chief investigating officer. I then, and, and her account was uh, that there was an argument over the definition of consent. Uh, it's a very detailed point. And I felt that her voice had to be amplified to the DPP because I thought she potentially had a case. The DPP well, looked at it and agreed that, the, that all guidelines had been followed. All guidelines had been followed and the police had concluded after a thorough investigation that it didn't stand up. Well, I, at the, but I, at the time I didn't know that. I wanted to make sure that they'd, they'd cast the net far and wide. And let's not forget... Well, do forget, you know that now? Well, John, the reason I'm in a slightly difficult position is there, on, there are ongoing police investigations. And as the Panorama programme last week showed, when ACPO and the Met Police 
a cautioned public discourse on this, there are still live investigations. And so it's very, it's very difficult for me to speak out on my knowledge of the existing investigations. But as you well know, we're dealing with very vulnerable, quite disturbed often, uh, people who are apt to make a lot of claims and they must be investigated, and in this case they were. But the police concluded that there was no case to answer. Indeed, they have told Lady Britain that that is the case. Mm. They have not yet told the survivor Jane that that is the case, actually. Um, they, the, 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 and, and she would still like to know. The other challenge here is that you've been pretty hot on pursuing uh, conservative uh, suspects, but you've had very little to say about Labour ones. Well, that's yeah, in other words, you're politically motivated. That's actually not true. I've written publicly about the Rotherham Inquiry. I've publicly commented on the Janna case. I have reported information that's been reported to me to the police on people who are Labour Party members, Liberal Democratic but, but Party you will members, know better than I, and Conservative Party members. What's in the public domain is the banner flying up uh, no. Watson versus Britain. No, There's no well, Watson versus Janna, no well, Watson versus Rotherham. Well, well, Watson in the public domain, I've written in national newspapers on Rotherham, and I, I can give you the article. Yeah, but you haven't written about Janna and, and, and about Yes, about I have. I've, pu I've published about Janna well, to 200 pounds. Well, not in the Daily Mirror, where you've had these very highly publicised no, but particularly but I, in the aftermath of Leon Britton's death. I, I have publicly commented to hundreds of thousands of people on social media on the Janna case. Well, the, the other thing is that, that it is suggested that uh, at least one of your rallies in your campaign to become uh, deputy leader of the Labour Party, uh, the alleged victim, Jane, um, appeared with you in this, uh, in this scenario. Uh, I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware That's of that. That's reported in, in, but in the I, Mail on Sunday. Well, it has been reported that, um, the, that Jane was a Labour Party member. Uh, I can tell you that I wasn't aware of her political affinity when she first came to see me. And the and idea... you're not aware that she was idea, present at one of your campaign rallies to become... Uh, and, and participated in it? I can't remember that. No, I'm not aware of that. But let me say this. Let me say this. The idea that you would try and use an allegation of rape uh, to gain political uh, preference is just totally unacceptable, and I reject that. Are you going to speak to Leon Britton's family? I'm not entirely certain whether that would be productive. Well, don't you think you could at least issue a genuine, heartfelt apology for the grief you caused? John, I need to be honest to myself and to people. I believe that I was, I was helping victims have their voice heard, and I don't want to cause more distress than has already been caused. Do you believe that you may be causing more distress to the Labour Party as Deputy Leader? and that perhaps it might be wise to step down whilst this furora boils? Absolutely not. Do you believe you're fit for this office? Of course I do. Don't you think Jeremy Corbyn's got enough to, on his plate without having to deal with all this? Well, I'm trying to get to the truth of historic child abuse uh, over many decades, and we need a public poli policy response to that that means that we can never, uh, never again allow victims to have their voices unheard in the criminal justice system. A detective chief inspector resigned over the way in which you uh, dealt with that case uh, affecting Leon Britton. Do you regret that and do you have an apology to make to him? Well, he, did a, he did a good job. All I can say to you is there is far more to this case than meets the eye and I think that, uh, that should be a concern for the Goddard inquiry but I don't think it requires public comment now. Tom Watson, thank you for talking to us.